Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everybody and welcome back to Change of Heart. A couple days ago we spoke about a companion named Amr bin Malik radiallahu an, somebody who he disappointed the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam by the things that he did. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam told him about his disappointment, it shook him to his core and he went back and begged the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam for his pardon and to be pleased with him. This is after one action. This is after one moment that a companion, Amr, made a poor decision and as a result of that he felt the weight of the disappointment of the Prophet ﷺ to the point where he felt like, you know, I have to go and ask him to be pleased with me. Imagine if there was somebody who spent the better part of 20 years not only disappointing the Prophet ﷺ, but being somebody who stood his entire existence was in opposition to the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. His entire being was trying to fight the Prophet ﷺ. As he said, you know, as he once said later, this individual, that he spent his entire life carrying the banner against Islam. What would you say about that person? Would you say that there was any hope for them? Look at the response of Amr bin Malik. Look at how desperate he became. Would you say there, were, there would be any hope for somebody who spent 20 years fighting and hurting and threatening and putting the life of the Prophet in danger and taking the lives of his companions, going against him in battle over and over again. And this person also, subhanAllah, happens to be a relative of the Prophet He's a, a milk brother. They were both nursed by the same nursed mother, Hanima, radiallahu anha. This is Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan was somebody, radiallahu anhu, who if you read his name in the Sira books, if you ever open up a book on the life of the Prophet ﷺ and you come across the name Abu Sufyan, radiallahu anhu, you're probably reading his name in the context of a time in which he was going against the Prophet ﷺ because he accepted Islam very late into the message of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And this acceptance of Islam happened the night before Mecca was reopened for the Muslims. This was sort of like the final moment, the final major, major moment of the life of the Prophet ﷺ is when all of Arabia was accessible to the Muslims. They, they, they came from a time of fear where they couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't even leave their own homes in Mecca. Then were able to move to Medina, but still had to stay in sanctuary. And then eventually got to a point where they were able to make relationships and alliances. And then the, the peak of this was when Mecca, the place that they had to run away from, was then opened back up for them, meaning that they could go visit the Kaaba, they could go worship freely there, they didn't have to be worried about persecution and so on. And this obviously happened, uh, you know, at a time when the Muslims were seen as strong and accepted as the power of Arabia. And it happened without a single drop of blood. It happened. The Prophet Sallallahu he uh, rode into uh, Mecca and he was humbled and grateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and as he stood before those same people who had caused him so much pain, had caused him so much pain in his life for decades, those same, that same community that launched attack after attack after attack, that, that did so much harm to him and his followers, he said that there's no blame on you today. And he forgave them all. Abu Sufyan accepted Islam the night before that happened. And so obviously the question that people had including the Prophet ﷺ, was about the repentance of Abu Sufyan, his tawbah, his sincerity, whether or not he meant it. Because it's easy for a person to accept Islam the night before Islam is about to come in and open up your city for the Muslims again. But Abu Sufyan did mean it, and he was sincere. And he and his wife Jumana bint Abi Talib, radiallahu anha, and their son Ja'far, right, Ja'far, uh, they went to the Prophet ﷺ and they tried to plead their case. And Abu Sufyan, there's a very powerful narration that tells us that Abu Sufyan was like desperate. You know, you think of Amr bin Malik one moment, now think of Abu Sufyan عنه, who's like 20 years. And uh, subhanAllah, he goes and he tries to meet with the Prophet ﷺ. Um, and he goes up to the caravan and everybody turns away. They see the Prophet ﷺ turn his face away, so everybody turns their face away. And the Prophet ﷺ, you know, out of just, again, uh, not, not certain whether or not he's sincere, a lot of pain, a lot of memories, a lot of trauma due to this, this individual, not sure what he's all about. The Prophet ﷺ just 
could not look at him directly at that moment. And so the companions turned away, Abu Bakr, everybody. And so Abu Sufyan, he goes to Al-Abbas, Al-Abbas who, again, was well-respected in Mecca. Accepted Islam, but well-respected in Mecca. So he went to him and he said, Al-Abbas, he said, can you please, oh Abbas, can you please like petition for me on behalf of the Prophet Wasallam? Go on behalf of me to the Prophet Wasallam and petition for me. And Al-Abbas said, no way, man, I'm sorry. I can't do it. And subhanAllah, he said, Abu Sufyan said at that point, he's telling his own story, he said at that point I felt like, you know, I'm just going to die here in the desert alone. No one's going to accept me. Like after all these years of fighting against this community, they're not bringing me in. And he wasn't even upset necessarily because he understood. So he said he went and he spent days sitting right outside the camp of the Prophet ﷺ, like the tent of the Prophet Muhammad He spent days just sitting there, just hoping that the Prophet ﷺ would accept him. And then the day of Fatih Mecca comes, and you know he obviously has accepted Islam in the days leading up to that, in the night before you know formally accepting Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ comes into Mecca, and of course they set up their tent there. And the Prophet ﷺ even ends up speaking to Jumana bint Abi Talib, right? But he doesn't speak to Abu Sufyan at that point. And so this is weighing down on his heart very heavily. And he doesn't quite fully accept Abu Sufyan in that way. In that way, of course, he accepts him as a Muslim, he accepts him as a brother, of course. But he doesn't overlook all of the pain that Abu Sufyan has caused. Because again, repentance needs to be commensurate and proven and shown, as we've talked about. Right? Repentance can't just be, you can't just hurt somebody for two decades and say, sorry. Right? It's not how that works. Right? And with Allah, Allah Ta'ala will forgive if a person begs and asks for repentance. But with people, it takes time. Even the Prophet Sallallahu it took a little bit of time. And so, fast forward now to the Battle of Hunayn. Battle of Hunayn was very interesting because even though the Muslims were large in number, it was not an easy battle for them. And there was even some Muslims who retreated and ran uh, during this battle. Right? They walked in with a little bit of confidence because of their numbers and it ended up proving to be very difficult for them. And Abu Sufyan, during this battle, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he's, being, he's fighting and he's noticing that there's two people next to him. One of them is Al-Abbas, and the other one has a helmet on. And so he asks Al-Abbas, he says, Al-Abbas, he says, who is this person? And he looks at him and Abu Sufyan takes his helmet off and shows his face to the Prophet ﷺ. And Al-Abbas says, Ya Rasulullah, it is your brother. It's your cousin and your brother, because remember they had the same milk mother. He says, it's Abu Sufyan. And then Al-Abbas takes that moment right there, and he says, accept him. Accept him. Look at what he's done now. He's changed. He's a new person. And the Prophet ﷺ says, I know. And he asks Allah to forgive Abu Sufyan for 20 years. On that moment, he says, oh Allah, forgive him for all of his enmity, all of the pain, all of the torture, all of the death, all of the fear, all of the distress that he caused every single believer. When they heard his name, they would become so upset because of what he did to them. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Oh Allah, forgive him for every second of that life that he lived. Forgive him for that and accept him. And Abu Sufyan said, This is when I knew I was accepted. And subhanAllah, he then, he, he recited some poetry and he said that, I spent my whole life fighting against this man. I spent my whole life fighting against him. And I was lost. He says, I was so astray. And the same man that I spent my whole life fighting against, he said that he was the one who, when he accepted me, when he brought my faith to me, he taught me my faith and he accepted me, even though I made his life so difficult. Abu Sufyan was so grateful. He was so, so grateful. What are some of the points of this story, of this transformation in the heart of Abu Sufyan? Number one was that his family and his son, right, Jumana and Jafar, they supported him and they stayed with him and they kept giving him hope and, you know, they kept fortifying him in his journey of repentance. That repentance oftentimes is not just a single moment, right? It takes time. Repentance is like an entire journey. And you need people around you that are going to support you. 
You need people in your life that are going to motivate you. You know, look at your people in your life right now. Are they people who would be happy for you if you repented to Allah? Are they people who would motivate you to repent to Allah? You know, if you decided to change something about your life in this moment, are the people in your life right now, are they people that would be happy for you? And for you, are you a person in the life of your friends and family that if they got closer to Allah, you'd celebrate them, you'd be happy for them? We all need that support. We need our family and friends to be people that encourage Tawbah in our life. And that when they see us doing it, you know, when they see us stand up to pray after many, many, you know, months and maybe years of, of being lazy with our prayers, when they see us standing up to pray, they celebrate that. They tell us good job. They don't doubt us. They don't say, oh yeah, you? Imagine if Abu Sufyan wanted to accept Islam and his family said, yeah, right, we know who you are. Like, come on, man, be real, right? How many times have we tried to change and people around us have tried to hold us back? Right? Or how many times have people in your life tried to change and you've held them back because of maybe an insecurity that you and I, we might have. Right? May Allah forgive us. So surround yourself with people. Be part of an ecosystem. Be part of a social group that will help you have these changes of heart that will celebrate them when each, of, when each person has them. The next lesson is that you have to keep trying. Repentance may not be easy. You may not forget the sins that you've committed, as we've talked about before. You may slip again, as we've talked about before. There are so many different things that might happen. You have to keep pushing forth. Because there will be that moment, that breaking point, which for Abu Sufyan was the Battle of Hunayn, when you will finally feel that acceptance. And lastly, as Abu Sufyan said, sometimes the solution in our life to the problems that we have, the sins that we have, are found in the things that we are avoiding the most that he was avoiding the Prophet ﷺ, so much so that he was fighting him. But the solution to his life was found in the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. We keep looking for solutions elsewhere and we're ignoring the practice of our faith. We're ignoring prayer, we're ignoring salah, we're ignoring Qur'an, we're ignoring Islamic studies and learning more about our religion. And the solution for our problems are found in those things while we ignore them. It's about time that we have that turn. It's about time that we change, like Abu Sufyan, and instead of fighting against it, we go to it. We ask Allah Ta'ala to grant us that transformation. Barakallahu feekum, inshaAllah. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.